Somehow I knew you'd want to see me. See you? I wish I'd never met you, Carlo. In a few hours, I'm going to be testifying at Vicky's hearing. You look completely trustworthy. It's a nice suit. Well, let's hope that the judge will trust me, because if anybody asks what my connection was with you, I don't know what I'm going to tell them. What do you mean, connection? We're merely casual acquaintances. Yes, who merely tried to drug Vicky, and then who merely brought out Nikki Smith in order that she could kill her own daughter. Oh, come on now. It's impossible to prove claims like that. Besides, they're totally irrelevant. Vicky is being arraigned for the murder of my son. Once she's convicted, my Johnny will finally rest in peace. Expecting someone? I don't know, Carlo. It could be um, anybody. All right, it doesn't matter, Gabrielle. I'll wait in the kitchen. Wherever it is, though, get rid of them. I know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I need to talk to you about what you're going to say in court today. You're enraged and you're not going to take it anymore. Rich or poor, right. there's only one kind of justice in Landview, right? Right. 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 Equal. Right. Okay, right. so both of you. Megan, do you have a statement? No statement. Yeah, no, actually, I would like to make a statement. Wonderful, but do speak up to here so you can be heard over the Vox Papala. Oh, I will speak loud and clear. I want you to know exactly what I think of you. Hours, then it will be over. And if I keep telling myself that, maybe I'll believe it. You have a visitor, ma'am. Tina. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Hi. Oh, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just a little grungy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I brought you a change of clothes for the hearing. Oh. I thought it would maybe strike the right tone. Well, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. I just wish that there was something else I could do. I know this is all my fault. Tina, please stop it. You're not to blame for this. You really aren't. Besides, now that I've got the right clothes and the right shoes, everything's going to be fine. I've been charged with first-degree murder. And I could go to jail for the rest of my life. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbows in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't win. Don't cry. One Life to Live, brought to you by Promise Spread. Vicky, what are you saying? Well, honey, it's true, you know. I'm guilty. I shot him. No, I killed no, Johnny. that was Nikki Smith. You didn't pull the trigger. Oh, please, Tina, please. Oh, I'm so fed up with discussing the ins and outs of my relationship with Nikki Smith. I have had it. I put you all through so much. I put the children through so much. Listen to me. You're, you, I spent the night last night with your kids, and they, they're a lot tougher than you think they are. Oh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are, but there has got to be a limit as to what they can be put through. Do you have any idea what I have done to them in the last nine months? What they've gone through because of me? Just think about it. I was shot. I had a stroke that was so hard for them. Then I pretended to be Nikki Smith. Now I'm in jail. Look, I know it's difficult, but Vicky, listen to me. This is this is temporary. You're not going to go to jail. You're not. I, I've been around the block a few times. You know that. I, I, you got to trust me. The, the judge, as soon as the hearing starts, you're going to walk out a free woman. Really. Listen to her, Sheila. Listen to her. <laughs> and here I was worried about how you got through the night. Well, just look at you. Beautiful as you ever were. You are such a lousy liar. I beg your pardon? I've never been able to lie to you. Huh? You know, the judge is going to take one look at you and just throw this case out of court. Yeah, he's right. Look, I'm going to leave you two alone, okay? Thanks, Tina. Thank you for bringing the clothes, honey. I love you. Later. Clint. You know, just in case you don't know it, my bed sure fell empty last night. <laughs> so 
put in my little cot here. <laughs> They're treating you okay? Oh, yeah, fine. Rafe was on duty last night. There was no trouble. How are the children? They're fine, fine. Joey and Jessica are uh, going to stay home today. Why? Are they afraid the children at school will say something? No, 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 no. They're fine, they're fine. I just thought it'd be a good idea for them to stay close to the house. Yeah. Uh, Kevin's going to be here, though, but he's not going to be alone. The courtroom is going to be packed with family and friends, everyone in town who will support you. I know you're scared, sweetheart. We all are. But we're here for you. We're in your corner. So use us and draw strength from us. I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to be strong, Clint, but... Honey, you are strong. You're the strongest, bravest person I know, man or woman. But you don't have to be superwoman. You don't have to face this alone. You get the message, Mrs. B? As long as I'm alive, you don't never, ever have to face anything alone. Well, I feel stronger just holding on to you. <laughs> well, you know what? In that case, I just may never, ever turn you loose. <laughs> promise me, please, promise me. Please. Megan, I really don't think this is a good time for a statement. I actually think this is a very good time. Well, what a trooper. Your intrepid fans are dying to know. What is it like having a murderess for a mother? Okay, okay. No, I, I, think no, I would like to answer that question. Excuse me. Could you all come over here for a second? Thank you. Well, uh, Dorian Lord has just asked me what it's like to have Vicki Buchanan as a mother. No, I... I now, of course, that's you, the easiest question I've ever been asked. To the people of Landview, Vicki represents everything that's good in this town. Otherwise, she wouldn't have won the mayorship by a landslide. That's yesterday's news. Of course, Today. her public and her private side are no different. She treats her family as she treats the everyday citizen. She's someone you can count on. Okay, and that's saying a lot in this day and age. Oh, yes, but the fact remains... The fact that remains that my mother suffers from a highly unusual, highly complex personality disorder. Big deal. I don't think that comes as a big shock to anybody here. This, the people in Landview knew that when they elected her as mayor. And they figured that she would be able to cope with that. And she has. She's handled it very well. And she will continue to. Now, I don't think that that is grounds for impeachment. I think that's grounds for understanding and admiration. Oh, those are beautiful words. But the citizens are not going to sit around and listen to a, a gifted actress okay, recite a beautiful speech. Right here, sure. No, we are not going to do that. Okay, people, let's break this up. We're doing this. Let's break it up. She's not in here. You can take it out for me. I just want to give her a of my mind. Good, good. I think you did. Now, come on, let's go inside and sit I'm, down. I, I have to go to the ladies' room and pull myself together. You going to be OK? Yeah. OK, I'll wait inside. All right. Bye. All right, Megan, you won this round. But we're not through yet. So why are you so concerned about my testimony today? It's you I'm concerned about. You're going to have a rough day today. Especially if you have to walk in that courtroom alone. If you want, I'll go in with you. You would do that for me? Well, for you and for Vicky. Oh, I see. Gabrielle, if you have someone there that believes in you, someone that cares about you, it's easier to tell the truth, the whole truth, and not leave anything out. I don't know what you're implying, Tony. I really don't have a story to tell today. <laughs> I find that very difficult to believe. Oh, you do? Mm. The police have all the information that they need from the tape that I took out of Tina's room. All they want me to do is verify it in open court. Then what did I overhear you saying in church the other night? That is something else you are mistaken about. I was not confessing that night. Okay, okay. I don't know the whole story. I only know bits and pieces. But you have the opportunity here to tell the truth. To let everybody else see the goodness that I see in you, the goodness that you keep denying is there, Gabrielle. Oh, please, I... Tony, please. Just let me, just let me escort you to the courthouse. Oh, I mean, I... I think you're so sweet. To offer this. Truly, I do, but I can't go with you to the courtroom, all right? <laughs> Why not? It's not a sign of weakness to, sh to show you need someone. No, of course it isn't. It's a simple reason. I have so many things I have to do before I even leave this house. Well, look, let me tell you. Uh, well, when I do see you at the courtroom, why don't you throw me a, a wink or a nod? I'm sure that would be perfectly enough. You know? I hope so, Gabrielle. 
Take care. If there's one thing that worries me more than priests, it's ex-priests. Tony has not completely left the priesthood. He's on a sabbatical. He's been trained to keep secrets. He knows something he's not saying. Suppose you tell me what it is. Midnight confessions. I don't like it, Gabrielle. <laughs> well, what have you told him about us? I haven't told him anything, I swear. The um, secret, the, the jewel, the prize of our relationship is cooperation. Remember that, Gabrielle. I uh, only got a little excited because I heard Tony talking about confessions, as if he knew there was more to your story than you've told the DA. I have told him nothing about us, Carlo. Oh, uh, it uh, might not have been intentional. Perhaps it slipped out. A word, a phrase, uh, a nuance of some kind. Believe no me, I don't want anybody on... to know about you and I any more than you do. I wanted to hear you say that. When you stand up in the court today, remember, I'll be standing there listening to everything you have to say. Time to go. I'll uh, slip out the uh, back way. See you at the courthouse. Uh, what is that, uh, that uh, saying they say in the theater, um, break a leg? Well, I don't know what they say in the theater, Carlo, but it's one thing I do know, Gabrielle. You have to survive no matter what. Uh, Megan. Please, I would like to apologize for any misunderstanding out there. Well, there was no misunderstanding. You were the same spiteful creature that you've always been. <laughs> Please, this gives me no pleasure to do this. I am just a journalist out getting a story. You are to journalism what Mr. Ed is to thoroughbred racing. Now, would you just get out of my way? Wait, wait. This overreaction only makes me believe that uh, you really think your mother's going to be convicted. Oh, Dorian, what are you trying to do? Get a rise out of me so you can sell more papers? You want to print something? Print this. I know why you're trying to crucify my mother. It's not because she's guilty. It's because you hate her. You've always hated her. You're jealous of her. You want what she's got. Love, respect, and a family. Why don't you do us all a big favor? Just go out there and find yourself a life. Then you wouldn't be constantly picking away at Vicky's. Oh, wait, my life is just peachy, thank you very much. I'm not the one with the dual personality. No, well, in your case, one is too much. And I was not charged with first-degree murder. No, you're the one that fanned it. Is that how you get your kicks? Out of no. other people's misery? It gives me no pleasure to watch your misery or Vicky's. But I have a duty to the public. Oh, please. Oh, yes, you know, the Buchanans don't have a, a monopoly on virtue. And this town is never going to see its full potential until it is rid of the Buchanan influence. And once the Buchanans leave, who's going to be around to catch that flag before it hits the ground? I would consider it an honor. Yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> Oh, I'm fine. Now that I'm not locked in the bathroom with Dorian anymore. Okay. I'm telling you, she's going to get it one of these days, and I want to be around when she does. Well, it looks like everyone's here. Mm. You say that again. I knew it. Old Buzzard's circling for a kill. Well, he's not going to get any satisfaction today. Steady, sweetheart. Steady. Clint, there's so many people. I know. They're all here on your side, Vicky. Not all of them. Mom. Evan. Hi, darling. I'm sorry. You'll have to stay away from the prisoner. Matron, please. He's our son. Uh, can we have a moment? Well, all right, but just one minute. Thanks. Oh, sweetheart. Thank you so much for being so wonderful with Joey and Jessica. God, Kevin, I'm so proud of you. Mom, you're the one that we're proud of. And the whole family. I needed to tell you something. I understand now about how we should all stick together. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's okay. I love you very much. I'm sorry, Mrs. Buchanan. Okay. Come on, Kevin. 
Just remember, you're not alone. sorry I am about your predicament, and I sincerely hope that I didn't contribute to it in any way. My goodness, that was very graciously said, Gabrielle. I suppose I should be gracious in return, but I don't think I'm going to be, not anymore. You are a compulsive, self-serving liar. I think you should stop all this nonsense and admit it. Does Megan know you're leaving? No, that's the goodbye I've been waiting for the last possible minute to say. Mm. Where's she anyway? Is she uh, with Jake? Yeah, they're at the courthouse at uh, Vicky's hearing. Ah, that's right. Maybe I should just leave her a note. She's got a lot on her mind, huh? I don't know. I think she'd really like to see you, and I know Jake would. Hmm. I'm gonna try to call a cab and get over there. No, 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 wait. I have an idea. I'm gonna drive you to the courthouse. I'm gonna drive you to the airport. How about that? Well, you know, you'd make leaving Landview a lot easier if you weren't so nice. Yeah, well, that's me. All over, darn it. John, John. Not now, Dorian. Uh, yeah, well, I know. You have a, a client to defend. But a simple hello and a little kiss, that won't take much time. Hello. I guess the kiss will have to wait, huh? Look, we'll have plenty of time to talk after I get through with this. But right now, I am busy. You're on the wrong side, John. You should have consulted me before you took the case. Dorian, even if I wanted your advice, I hardly had time to consider my options. Bo called, I took the next available plane, and... and... you didn't even call me. I have feelings, you know, after what we meant to each other. Well, this might come as a little shock to you, but I've been very busy trying to clear Vicky. And from what I can tell, you've been busy doing the exact opposite. Is that why you didn't call? Or, uh, is there a new woman in your busy life? The only woman in my busy life right now is my client. Now, if you don't mind. I admire your devotion, John, but uh, you know what they say. All work and no play. Well, maybe if you lay off of Vicky a little bit, I won't have to work so hard. Maybe then uh, I'll have time to play. <laughs> Was that clear enough, Gabrielle? Or perhaps I should raise my voice a bit so that everyone can hear exactly what I think of you. Vicky, I understand that you're frightened and angry, but there's no need to blame me with all your problems. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you take your seat, please? Oh, uh, that's okay. My client isn't going to cause any problems. No, sorry, right. I don't mind. Vicky, look, why don't you just let Gabrielle go back to her John, seat? I appreciate your concern, but there really are a few things that I'd like to say to Gabrielle. Matron, you can stay right there. Believe me, I have no intention of causing a scene. Perhaps this isn't the best no, time anyway. please, I insist. You were so kind. You took so much trouble to come down here and convey your sympathies. I really feel I ought to reciprocate in kind. All right, Mrs. Buchanan. Thank you. Thanks, John. Well, I guess it's just the two of us, Gabrielle. Now we'll know where we stand. Vicky, if I've done something to offend you... To please, offend me? No. Do you know that's odd you should say that? That is the one thing you haven't done to me yet. Of course, you helped Carla to try and drug me. What? That is preposterous. How soon they forget. Don't you remember the glass of champagne at Tina and Cord's wedding reception? The mind-altering drug that was stolen from Alex Olenoff's father? Is any of this coming back to you yet? How about Carla's attempt to brainwash me into murdering my own child? You know, the how and the what of it don't even interest me that much anymore. It's the why that I don't understand. Have I ever been anything less than kind to you? Even when your marriage to Max was falling apart, did I ever fail to show you friendship and support? No, Vicky, you have always been the dearest friend. That's why I'm completely floored by these accusations. You can stand there and stare me in the face and deny them. 
I, I don't know what rumors you've heard. Or perhaps Max has, has told you some lies to help his own custody case, but I can state categorically that I've never had any involvement with Carlo Hesse. What about the night you took me to see him? Don't you remember the empty artist's loft, the party that never was? You haven't forgotten that, have you? Of course I haven't forgotten it. I was devastated when I found out that he had you in his clutches. I wanted only to show Nikki a good time. Ah, but I wasn't Nikki, was I? I was only pretending. But how was I to know that, Vicky? When you, or rather Nikki, asked me to take you out for the night, I agreed. For Carlo's sake? No, for your sake. Is what I thought you wanted, Vicky. Don't you see? You have me all wrong in this. No, no, Gabrielle. But I do have you. Believe me, I do. I may not be able to prove your connection with Carlo Hesse right now, but don't think for a minute that you're home free. Believe me, what comes around goes around, and sooner or later, it's coming to you. Vicky, I don't understand this vengeful attitude you've got against me. As God is my witness, I've never done anything to harm you. I would be very careful taking the Lord's name in vain. This is an old building. That's all, Mrs. Buchanan. Uh, Gabrielle, why don't you, while you're ahead, huh? People of Lantano County, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, court is now in session. Judge Delaney presiding. Be seated, everybody. Let's the hearing begin. I don't know. You just told me to bring you on here. Hunter, what are you doing here? Hey. Sorry to pull you out like this, guys, but I couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Oh, we have plenty of time for that. Look, why don't you have dinner with us at tonight? At Andy's. We'll all go out and have dinner, but right now we have to get back yeah. into the courtroom. Sorry, I'm, I can't be here tonight. I've said goodbye twice before. This time it's for you. My plane leaves in an hour. Well, so soon I thought we'd have more time. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So did I. But, uh, well, we've said everything we've had to say twice. We don't have to say it three times. I just want you guys to know, I hope you're really happy. Well, thanks, Hunter, and, um, again, I appreciate you helping me with the poker game. Hey, thanks. it was fun. Wish you could have kept the money. <laughs> two of us. Mind if I, uh, kiss your bride? Hey, you better. <laughs> I'll look the other way. Oh. And look, we'll keep in touch, okay? All righty. You believe it. Better believe it. <laughs> I'm not, uh, gonna let you drop out of my life completely. I'll even take Jake if I have to. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I hate to break up the party, but I've double parked. Oh, are you the chauffeur? Or is that chauffeur? Yes, I do want to make sure that he gets to the airport and on a plane this time. Enough of the goodbyes, all right? All right, enough sure. of the goodbyes. Have a safe trip. Thanks. Okay. And uh, give oh. my best to Vicky. Okay. I'm rooting okay. for her. Bye. And nothing but the truth, so help you God. I swear. Yeah, Mrs. Holden, this is a hearing, not a trial. However, the rules of perjury uh, still apply. You understand that? Yes. Good, good, good. I'm going to take you back to the day Johnny D. met with his death. You remember, don't you? Yes, I do. And the reason that memory is so unforgettable, is it because uh, you were a witness to Mr. D.'s death? Yes, unfortunately, I was. The only witness. Objection. Does counsel suggest that the witness was the only person at the crime scene, other than the victim? Obviously not, Your Honor. However, uh, I do mean, and I believe uh, Mr. Russell will agree, that Mrs. Holden is the only witness capable of remembering what happened that afternoon. Well, counsel, we'll concede that uh, she's capable. I think that whether her memory proves to be accurate or not remains to be seen. Well, why don't we find I'm out, Mr. Not Russell? sparring, gentlemen. Let's get on with it. Fine, thank you. Mrs. Holden, uh, why were you at Landfair that fateful afternoon? Had you been invited? No. Uh, Tina was going through a very rough time. Uh, she and her husband, Cord, were estranged, and she was pregnant. In fact, she thought she was carrying another man's child. Johnny D's child. Your Honor, what is the point of all of this? Now, the, 
child isn't innocent in this. She bears no responsibility to the case, no bearing on it whatsoever. And uh, besides, it's already been proven that the child is Court Roberts, not Johnny D. Mr. Russell, no one knew that at the time, especially Johnny D. And that fueled his obsessive interest in Tina Roberts and brought him to land for her that day. I think we covered all of that in Mrs. Roberts' testimony. Yes, you're, you're, you're correct about that. Uh, Mrs. Holden, um, when you rang the doorbell at Landfair, what happened? Um, nobody answered. So I tried the door and it was open. I, I called out again, but th still there was no answer. So I, I went upstairs and that's when I found Tina unconscious on her bed and Johnny was on the floor bleeding. What did you do then? <laughs> I called 911. And you waited for the emergency unit to arrive? Uh, uh, well, I was so panicked and frightened, I, I wasn't... <laughs> the only thing I really remember was there was a tape recorder running. Uh, uh -huh. I, I did turn it off and I took the tape out and I left the house. So you left the scene of a crime and took with you what could only be described as material evidence. I'm, I'm not proud of it, but I, as I said, I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. But later, in the security of your home, did you listen to the tape? Uh just a little bit, uh, bits and pieces. I was much more concerned and frightened. I, I, I wanted to get the tape out of the house. Will you tell the court, please, what you did hear? Uh, Vicky's voice. Well, uh, not her voice. I, I, it could only have been Nikki Smith's voice. Mm -hmm. While she was holding a gun on Johnny, and then she shot him. Order! Why didn't you tell the police who shot Johnny D? Because I didn't want to hurt Vicky. Thank you, Mrs. Holden. Your witness. Mrs. Holden, I would like to reestablish something just so there's no mistake. Now, Tina Roberts has told us that she lost consciousness, that she was totally out cold when you came up to her room and you found the deceased. Is that a true statement? Yes, I've already said that. And she also told us that before she lost consciousness, Johnny D held her at gunpoint, the same gun that was eventually used to kill him. Also true? Uh, objection. The witness arrived after the gun had been fired. Well, I'll rephrase, Your Honor. Mrs. Holden, were there obvious signs of a struggle? Definitely, definitely. So your friend was lying there unconscious. Johnny D was lying in a pool of blood, and there was a tape recorder which was on recording everything. Your reaction, you dialed 911. Yeah, yes, of course. Using your own voice. My, my own um, I've, voice? I've heard the tape, Mrs. Holden. Maybe we should talk. Well, I, I, was, I was very frantic, very frightened. I, uh, yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes. and then you voice. went and you took the tape out of the tape recorder. Now, why did you do that, Mrs. Because Holden? I was frightened. Well, of what? Johnny D was dead. I thought the tape would incriminate me. How can it incriminate you? You... You weren't a witness to the alleged crime. You weren't even there yet. Oh, unless maybe Johnny D was still alive. I, I, I said he was bleeding. He was wounded. But not dead. Not yet. In fact, he might have said something to you, perhaps. He might have said something. I don't... Something about you, maybe. Something, uh, something about the fact that you didn't do enough for him. I don't remember exactly what he said. Well, let me refresh your memory. Johnny D thought that Tina was carrying his baby and you helped him. I did that, not you? help Johnny D. I was Johnny furious D. with Johnny D. You got the same partnership with Carlo Hester's father. He's not asking questions. He's making accusations. Your Gabriel Honor. Holden is not on trial. I, I, I am only trying to... I know what answer. you're trying, but it won't work. Now, do you have any more questions in the form of questions? No, Your Honor. Redirect? No, Your Honor. The witness may step down. <laughs> Mr. Callison, you may proceed. Your Honor, excuse me, please, but before this goes any further, I have to say something. There it is. <laughs> What's so funny? This is so Freudian of you, don't you get it? Every time you think you're leaving town, you uh, make yourself stay. Look, don't read into this too much, all right? Sometimes I just have a bad memory. Uh-huh. Let's get out of here, all right? I don't want to have to say goodbye to everybody again. I don't think I could take that. No. <laughs> I have to lock this door behind us, so, Hunter. 
goodbye in his place. Oh, are you mad? Get away from me. Everybody's inside, riveted on Vicky's words. You heard the way John Russell went after me. He knows too much about me. Now everyone in Lambview knows my deep, dark secret. Uh, she's just trying to rattle you. Well, it worked, didn't it? Oh, and all that phony baloney stuff that Herb Callison came up with about Gabrielle is not on trial here, that Vicky Buchanan is there. God, that was such a laugh. Everybody is after me, aren't they? And they're going to get me, too, aren't Gabrielle, they? Gabrielle, get a hold of yourself. Look, John said that he had a witness, that he could testify that you and I were partners, that he could prove that. It's an old-fashioned lawyer's trick. He's a going trick fishing. A trick that could send me to prison, Carlo. It can't. But uh, you can send Victoria to Buchanan to uh, Statesville for the rest of her life. Hold tough, like you have today. If they put you on the witness stand again, Reiterate the primary thought. Nikki Smith's voice on that tape. Nikki Smith murdered my Johnny. Don't let any of them get to you. I oh, make it sound so simple. It is simple. Trust me, Gabrielle. Let me protect you. And I'll get you through this ordeal stronger than you've ever been before. Yes, I do. Mrs. Buchanan, I must ask you again. Are you sure you want to do this? Your attorney has advised you strongly not to take the stand. And it's my duty to tell you that if you do take the stand, you leave yourself open to cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor, I'm aware of that. I, however, I'd like to proceed. Your Honor, I would like to take a recess so that I can confer with my client. John, please, I don't want to talk. I realize that you're doing what you can to protect me, and I appreciate it, but I know what I'm doing. Very well. I'm doing this because I need to talk to my friends and my family as well as to the court. Too much has been left hidden. Too much has been left said in whispers and in innuendos and in outright lies. It's got to stop now. We've got to clear the air. I'm the only one that can do it. Well, it's an understatement to say that uh, you have the court's undivided attention. Thank you, Your Honor. I killed Johnny D. Order. Believe me, I take no joy in saying this, but it is a fact. And I base this on all the evidence and the information that has been shown to me, in particular the tape that my attorney and the district attorney have talked so much about. I cannot deny it, Your Honor. I cannot even offer any defense for it because, quite frankly, I don't know what happened at the shooting. The person who held the gun, the person who pulled the trigger, is someone who shares my mind and my body and who is as different from me as night is from day. Nikki Smith shot Johnny D. But I am Nikki Smith, therefore, in the eyes of the law, I am guilty. But in the spirit of the law, I am innocent. I can't tell you what happened when Johnny D was shot, but I, I can tell you what it is like to live with another personality inside you, a stranger, a stranger who is capable of taking over your life, of controlling your life and consequently controlling the lives of all the people that you love. For many, many, many years, I hated Nikki Smith until I finally learned that she is simply the result of an illness, which, very much like the stroke I suffered last summer, can be overcome with patience and love and understanding. God knows I tried for years to defeat Nikki Smith, and I thought that I had succeeded, but because of my stroke, I had a relapse, and as a result, Nikki Smith was able to emerge, and she shot Johnny D. I was sitting in my wheelchair, and I saw Johnny enter our home, uninvited. I heard him go up the stairs, and I heard him threaten my sister, and there was not a single thing that I could do to stop him. Because I was paralyzed, I was confined to my wheelchair. At that moment, that moment when my sister needed me more than ever before, I couldn't do a thing to help her. But Nikki Smith could. Somehow she found the strength that I lacked. Somehow she dragged herself out of the wheelchair and up the stairs and she confronted Johnny. I, I don't need to tell you the rest, you heard it on the tape. 
Frankly, Your Honor, if I had been able to make that climb, if I myself had confronted Johnny, I would have dealt with him quite differently. I know that, and the people who know me know that, because I do not condone, I do not defend her violence. But I must tell you that I am very, very grateful to her for having the strength to stand up to Johnny, to help Tina, where I couldn't. Nikki Smith is gone now, for good, I believe. And Johnny D is dead. And because his father mourns him, I suppose it's a tragedy, no matter what you think of Carlo Hesser or his son. But as God is my witness, I will never, ever, ever regret the fact that Nikki Smith was able to save my sister that day from Johnny. I am not entirely innocent, but I am not entirely guilty. And I can only ask for your understanding and I ask for justice. And no matter what you decide, however you judge me, my conscience is clear. Oh. Paging Dr. Freud! Oh. Paging Dr. Andy, Freud! Andy, Andy, cut it out, all right? Just help me here. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, Take I it easy. don't think I broke anything. I just tripped over the broom. Here, let me turn it. Oh, help me up that chair. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let me, let me check up your shoe and have a look. Oh, God! I'm sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. Oh, I think I'm wrong. I think I broke something. You know, I hate to tell you, but in 15 minutes, we better get to the airport or you're going to miss you. Oh. <laughs> Andy, this is not funny. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, I was just thinking that this was a literal Freudian slip, get it? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. At least you can laugh about it. That's good. Oh, what else can I do? Well, call a doctor, all right? I don't think I'm leaving town after all. <sighs> Carla, would you just get away from me? Now. We're out. Just the man I wanted to see. Gabriel. Tell me. You're still here, that's good. Good? It's good, good. I, mean, I was afraid you might run home and hide under the covers, but you didn't. You're braver than that. Tell me, would you stop trying to find the good in me? It just isn't there, all right? Trust me. I do trust you. That's why I know it's there. Look, you had a tough time on the witness stand. I saw that. But you wanted to tell the truth. You wanted to come clean. This is all in your imagination, Tony. It really is. The hardest thing in the world is to open up your heart and tell the truth in front of a room full of people. That's why the church built the confessional with room only for well, two. Well, then get this straight. I don't have anything to confess. Not here, not in church, not anywhere. There's still time. If you can't say it out loud, write it down. Hand it to John Russell or Herb Kalser or give it to me to hand to them. What matters is you tell the truth. Set Vicky free and set yourself free. Tony, please. It's just too bad that you weren't there for the Sermon on the Mount. Oh. You would have made a great speechwriter. Yeah, well, I think you did a much better job without me. But you got it wrong. I need him. He doesn't need me. I'm glad you know what you need. Because I also know what I need. No more prayers, no more sermons, and no more words of comfort. The one thing you did say that made perfect sense to me was about hiding under the covers. I like that idea. What do you make of that? Lady seemed upset. Must be something he said. Or something he knows. Find out what it is. Do whatever you have to do. Yes, sir. John, I'm sorry. I had to do it. Are you kidding? Don't be sorry. You were magnificent. A lot of other people think so, too. After reviewing all the psychiatric reports, I think I've gained some insight and understanding, enough to help render a judgment in this matter. I've also studied a variety of legal precedents on both sides, courtesy of Mr. Callison and Mr. Russell. In addition to the police reports provided by Commissioner Nichols, and I must say with all that information at my disposal, the case remains a most difficult and complex one. Sweetheart, I'm afraid she's going to rule against her. Okay, yeah, come on, just keep thinking positively. And yet, Mayor Buchanan's voluntary statement 
managed to clarify and crystallize a great many things for me. It's, uh, it's undeniable that Nikki Smith did shoot and kill Johnny D. It's equally clear that Vicki Buchanan perceived in Mr. D a clear and present danger to her sister Tina and Tina's unborn child. In the final analysis, it really doesn't matter which personality pulled the trigger. <laughs> the, uh, the shooting was brought on by Johnny D's criminal trespass and his criminal intentions toward Tina Roberts. He was shot with his own gun. It was unpremeditated. He was shot because in his own words, as we heard on the tape, he would not live without Tina. And so, ladies and gentlemen, after a review of all of the evidence, I, I, I just don't see any basis to uh, pursue this case to trial. Uh. Mayor Buchanan, you are free to, uh, to go home to your... Yes, yes, yes! There is justice in this town, honey. <laughs> oh, you're the greatest. Oh. Oh. Congratulations, I knew you would get off. Oh. Well, let's go home, do we? Let's go, yeah. Let's go home, oh, right here. Mayor, listen. Come on. A little some champagne. Oh, let's get out of here. A little. Oh, let's get out of here. All right. <laughs>